Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Beyond the Cage YouTube channel. We have some breaking news to talk about, and that's why Dave and I decided to come at you right now through the Google Plus Hangout this Friday morning on October the 5th, just before UFC on FX5 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota, eh? Go ahead, Dave. Minnesota, eh? That's right, if you ever watch the movie Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the big news we're talking about is Dennis Hallman. He had a fight scheduled against Tiago Tavares at 155 pounds, which was going to be on the undercard shown on Fuel TV tonight in Minneapolis. But Dennis Hallman missed weight by 7 pounds, and Tiago Tavares said that's too much weight, and the fight was eventually scrapped. And in the process, Dennis Hallman was actually cut by the UFC after missing weight. This is the second time Dennis Hallman has missed weight in his most recent return to the octagon. He originally fought at 170 pounds. His last two fights, he's tried to move down to the lightweight division. In his last fight against John Medeski, he missed weight, but was still able to fight that match and get the win. This time against Tiago Tavares, not the case. And according to a report from Ariel Hawani on MMAfighting.com, Dennis Hallman actually was just over the limit at 158 pounds, but he was very close to passing out. So doctors gave him IV fluids, which bumped him up to 7 pounds over the lightweight limit. When Tavares was notified of this news, he said Hallman would have to cut 3 more pounds. Hallman tried to get to that weight, but then Tavares said he would have to cut an additional pound, which Hallman said he was not able to do. So the fight was scrapped. And one of the reasons Hallman is stating for him missing weight is personal reasons. It doesn't really go into depth here on the article. This is, again, from Ariel Hawani on MMAfighting.com. Here's a quote from Hallman that Hawani was able to get. I'm having some personal issues at home, Hallman said. I'm not fit to fight. I told Dana White what my issues were. He understands my family matters, and he was cool with me not fighting. Now, obviously, I think more will come out from this story, but I don't think we've ever seen this day of a guy miss weight and then immediately cut, and he's also getting paid while getting cut. Kind of an unprecedented move uh, from the UFC and kind of an unprecedented move from a fighter in Dennis Hallman. Yeah, you know, it, it, it <clears throat> cutting weight's no joke. I, I've never uh, had to do anything anywhere close to that, um, you know, depriving yourself of what you need. Plus, if he's got stuff going on at home... I don't know, mom, dad, dying, kid, something. I, who knows what what it is. But uh, I, you got to give props to Dana White in the UFC because not only did he get his showing up money, but he got his win. I believe he got his win bonus also. So when I hear that, I'm thinking that there's probably something tragic that happened um, or, or something that that money is going to be used for. Um I also think that Dana and the UFC being so good to Holman may have something to do with him having 80 professional MMA fights, um, you know, kind of doing everything that they've asked of him. Um, I'm trying to think of the right word here. Kind of like a, like a reward for all the work that he's done to help the sport. Um, I, you know, I listened to the weigh-in show yesterday, and uh, Joseph Benavidez and Chael Sonnen were on there, and it seemed like they had issue with Tavares um, saying, "Hey, you got to drop these three pounds." No, it's one more. It's like either take the fight or don't. You know, if the guy comes in and he's seven pounds over, either say, "Hey, you cut three pounds and we'll fight," or no, you know what? You're way too you're way too big. I don't want to fight. Like, you can't just keep making these stipulations. Yeah, it, definitely. It, you you put all that time and effort into training, Dave, and you would think that even with a guy being a couple pounds over, you think you would still want to fight. And it just maybe seems to me that Tiago Tavares maybe didn't really want to fight Dennis Hallman. I could be wrong, but you know that seems a little cowardice to me to go. All right, three pounds. Ah, you know what? One more. You know. Either you want to fight or you don't. And if you're a guy that really wants to fight, I don't think you do that uh, type of thing. Was um, I also wanted to say another quote uh, from Dennis Hallman here again on this Ariel Hawani article off of MMA Fighting. 
He's also quoted as saying, They are cutting me, he wrote. Dana White gave me my show and win pay to help me deal with the mountain in front of me. Now I have to go mate wake a couple of times on the regional circuit. I'll be back to the UFC, though. I always am. So he thinks that this is just a small hiccup in the road for him and that he will be back. And uh, I hope he is because, again, hopefully we'll find out what is going on with him that has caused him to miss weight and caused him this hardship. But that will probably come out. And I guess the biggest thing coming away from this is obviously they lose a fight. So now there's supposed to be five fights shown on Fuel TV instead of six. And actually now we're in danger of only having four fights televised on Fuel TV unless they move up some of the Facebook fights, which it looks like they may do. As you just told me today, breaking news this morning that Jeremy Stevens is actually in jail somewhere outside of Minneapolis. Yeah, um, I'm, MMA junkies got the report. According to a Minneapolis Police Department representative, Jeremy Stevens was arrested at the Marriott City Center Hotel, which is this week's host hotel, and arrived at the Hennepin County Public Safety Facility a.k.a. jail, at 10.44 a.m. Central Standard Time. It's currently unknown when Stevens is scheduled to be released from the facility. And, of course, the UFC could not comment. Stevens' people couldn't comment on the reason for the arrest. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, like, like we said on the, on, the, uh, on the podcast, this card had lots of... Uh, Lots of recognizable names on it when it started, but now we're in in jeopardy of losing two fairly decent fights, um, which kind of stinks for those people going and those people that are going to be in front of their TVs tonight. Yeah, and I want to read you a tweet that Jeremy Stevens sent out 17 hours ago from Little Heathen MMA, that's Jeremy Stevens' Twitter account, going to El Toro in Robbinsdale, Minnesota at 9 p.m. tonight. Great food. Come join me if you can. Hashtag UFC on FX5. And when we talked about this story just before we went on here on Google+, Plus, I, I said, I wonder if this tweet, when he went to this restaurant, had anything to do with him being arrested. And I think it's just kind of funny that uh, I was able to catch that tweet there, and I actually retweeted it. So if you go to my uh, Twitter feed, uh, at Jim Graham, you'll see the tweet there. And obviously, 9 p.m. at night, you figure you're going to go and eat and hang out. You're probably there for an hour or two, and I wonder if uh, any beverages consumed that night led to his arrest uh, just outside of Minneapolis. How about this for breaking news? Ariel Hawani, t just just right now. According to Minneapolis PD, Jeremy Stevens was arrested this morning at 10.44 a.m. for a felony warrant. How would he already get a warrant if he just landed in Minnesota earlier this week? I'm just telling you what it says. So it had to be from last night, right? And he just got arrested this morning? Um, Ariel Hawani, he's still in custody. They won't give any more details Okay. how long he'll be in custody. He is still scheduled to fight Eve Edwards. Well, <laughs> definitely crazy turn of events from last night into this morning between Dennis Hallman and Jeremy Stevens. So all I can really say is, hey, watch Field TV and obviously the main card on FX to see what happens and see how this all thing uh, shakes out. And uh, Dave, real quickly before we end our uh, breaking news Google Plus Hangout, um, are you excited for the fights tonight, Bellator? You get to go over to uh, Hammond, Indiana to see some Bellator fights. Obviously, all the news is up where your brother's at, uh, Steve Sadler, in Minneapolis. But uh, it's, still, it's still pretty cool you get to go over to Hammond and see some uh, good heavyweight fights. Yeah. Um, I, try to, I try to keep it low-key on fight day because I don't want to over-amp myself because then I'm let down when I get there. But once I get in the car and head, uh, head north, you know, everything will start to be get you know, a little more exciting. Uh, you know, sometimes, I was talking to some guys at work, sometimes Bellator comes across as kind of iffy when it's on TV, just because it's not the UFC, it's not what we're used to seeing. But I tell you what, if it if they're near you, their show is awesome live. It has It just has a special feel to it. Even the guys that you see fight that you don't know, it just has a special feel to it. And I would recommend anybody go... Um, if, if they're in your area. Um, I want to give you an update before we go. This is from MMA Weekly, updated just now. Stephen's arrest has now been updated by the, Minneapolis, by the Minnesota Police Department. 
and he has been listed as in custody without bail due to an out-of-state felony charge. No further details were listed. Wow, so this is something that doesn't stem from that uh, tweet where he went out to dinner last night uh, just outside of Minneapolis. So this is some type of issue he did. I know he trains in San Diego. I'm pretty sure he now lives there. I know he's originally from Iowa, but maybe it sends something he did back in California. I don't know, but pretty crazy that all of a sudden, the morning before his fight in Minnesota, he gets arrested. So obviously more will come out from this story. We'll probably cover it on the podcast next Wednesday. So stay tuned for that as well as more developments probably from the Dennis Hallman story as well. So Dave, thanks for uh, coming on the Google Plus Hangout here and uh, talking about this breaking news. So for more breaking news, uh, go to our partners at VigilanteMMA.com and MMAForLife.ca. And once again, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, YouTube.com slash Podcast. For Dave, I'm Jim. Thanks, everybody.